coming up, we see how city volunteers in Jordan offer medical assistance to Syrian refugees in need of surgery. And we learn about safety issues concerning Taiwan's high-speed rail service and the Shiresan Tunnel. Welcome to Star Headlines. I'm Mary Lee. Thank you for joining us. Jordan has taken in over 600,000 Syrian refugees since the civil war in Syria began. However, in 2014, the United Nations ceased to provide medical assistance for refugees outside of the refugee camps. Knowing that there are many more in need of assistance, city volunteers in Jordan have continued to provide aid relief as well as medical care wherever needed. Next, we meet a few patients the volunteers have recently helped. For four years, the Syrian civil war has raged on without an end in sight. The United Nations and other countries have used up all their resources. However, Tsiji seems to continue on as promised. Tsiji also helped 22-year-old Khalid, who took a bullet to the spine. Volunteers were there not only to pay for his medical bills, but also stayed by his side during the four-hour surgery. Learning of the success of the operation, Khalid was able to smile once more. Two days later, as Khalid was about to check out of the hospital, Tsiji volunteers returned to present him with 200 Jordanian dollars as they know that this parting gift can help lift Kylie's financial burden for a while. Volunteers also helped five-year-old Noor, who was hurt in an air raid in July. After undergoing two major surgeries, Noor was recovering well when city volunteers visited him in August. However, leaving the hospital is just still a dream. Continuing our reports on the Syrian crisis, though the influx of refugees in Jordan have put a strain on the country's resources, local charity organizations are still welcoming those fleeing persecution with open arms. Lily, a city volunteer, has now opened up her heart to these refugees, but also her home, as her daughter and son-in-law adopted a Syrian baby boy in need of a loving family. Here is more on her story. On November 3, 2011, city volunteers in Jordan held their first ever aid distribution for Syrian refugees. The relief items were provided by Tsiji, while the recipient list was provided by local charity organization Al Takafu. From the interaction between city volunteers and the refugees, I see a real spirit of humanity. City volunteers really care for those less fortunate. You hand out relief items, yet you give thanks to them, just like in Allah's teachings. I think I can learn something from Tsiji. This is 70-year-old Lily, who escaped Palestine for the safety of Jordan. Tsiji came into her life in 2005, and ever since, she has been working on behalf of those in refugee camps. In 2013, a badly wounded Syrian refugee was found near the border of Lebanon. At the time, UNICEF doctors noticed the refugee was pregnant. In the end, the woman did not make it, but her baby boy was saved. Through a strange turn of events, Lily's daughter and son-in-law were able to legally adopt the boy.
we did not care for what they are talking because we are we are educated family and we are going on the right side of this baby we don't look at the background if he is coming from this side or from that religion or whatever he is a human being for the past four years, the rice and winter clothes that city volunteers have gifted to the recipients in Jordan have mostly come from Taiwan. I'm really grateful for the Tsuji brothers and sisters in Taiwan for their efforts in sending us relief items. Every time we open up the package, we are moved as we can see how much love and respect is put into each care package. The refugees can also feel the love and respect we have for them. Slowly, recipients have learned to give back. As in August of 2015, a total of 300 families received love from Tsuji in the form of rice from Taiwan, and those helping at the distribution were Syrian refugees and scholarship recipients. In August of 2015, Iraqi Catholics left their country to escape religious persecution. Some found shelter at a Catholic church inside the borders of Jordan. However, as the church will soon be opening a kindergarten, they have notified the 17 families and 14 refugees staying at the church grounds that they must move by September 15th. They will give us the rent, but they don't give the, the, uh, the food. It's uh, 175 uh, GDs for each month, but they will pay it for one year. So we have to move right now to see another one and see another apartment to live in it. And we don't know what we're going to do in, in the future. We have to wait for the UN for everything right now. In the past year or so, city volunteers have provided medical equipment and medicine to help doctors provide adequate care for the refugees. However, suffering and helplessness continues. With their experience in international charity relief, Tsuji volunteers hope to ease the anxiety of the refugees who seek shelter within the borders of Jordan as they look for a new start. In Malaysia's Batu Pahat, two fires broke out. One destroyed a furniture factory and the other several shops. To help, Tsuji volunteers arrived at the two locations to offer consolation cash and aid supplies. Meanwhile, a fire also reduced homes to ashes in a residential community in Indonesia's Kaput Murara. Tsuji volunteers there also mobilized to provide aid supplies and much needed emotional support. The charred remains of a grey car and motorcycle bear witness to the horrifying fire that broke out last Wednesday. The fire has turned Kabuk Mura, a community of 1,400 residents, into a wasteland. The fire broke out at 10 a.m. When I returned from work, I heard people scream fire. The fire was large and I do not know where it started. Fires occur frequently here, so residents have become very fast in salvaging belongings. However, no sockets for salvage electrical appliances are to be found here, because this is a temporary shelter. The fire victims can only rely on city volunteers' help now. Tsuji has a standard of procedure for disaster relief work. For fire victims, we provide meals and supplies, including blankets, sarongs, slippers, toiletries, in addition to other daily necessities, to see them through difficult times. I appreciate the Tsuji Foundation. Wherever disasters take place, they provide timely assistance. By distributing aid supplies, Tsuji volunteers give the fire victims a way to stay strong to face the trials ahead. Meanwhile, another fire broke out in Batu Pahat, burning down a furniture factory. When Tsuji volunteers arrive on the scene three hours after the accident, the fire was still simmering. To help the 48 affected factory workers, the volunteers brought eight supplies with them. The volunteers rushed to distribute 48 sets of eight supplies at the temporary shelter in which the workers were staying. Among the workers is Mitu, 
who had planned to go back to Bangladesh to visit his family in two days. But the fire ruined those plans. My checkbook and passport have been burned and I have nothing with me. Your aid supplies will help us get through the tough times. Thank you. I feel much better now. Besides the aid supplies, city volunteers also provided emotional support to the factory workers, who are all foreign laborers. I am very touched that you came to help and cheer us up. I thank you on behalf of all the foreign workers. I am deeply moved. We are, don't have anything people who can help uh, how like this. I'm very scared, but now it's uh, uh, this like this. Uh, all people come here and help, help, help. Uh, it's very good and feelings is very good. Yet another fire broke out in Bagan of Batu Pahat. The morning fire engulfed seven shops, but fortunately no one was hurt. <laughs> City volunteers arrived soon after to deliver consolation cash and supplies to help the fire victims get through the days ahead. This is an accident. The most important thing is we are still alive. We can still earn the money that was lost. Having delivered material and emotional support, the volunteers will continue to help the fire victims get back on their feet and rebuild their lives. Team members regularly conduct free clinics to make sure those in medically deprived areas receive adequate health care. Next, we join team members in central Taiwan as they visited patients in Taichung's Xinzhe area, while members from the northern district visited patients in New Taipei City's Sanzhi. Timo members have arrived in New Taipei City's Sanji District. <laughs> Joining the free clinic for the first time, traditional Chinese medicine doctor Yang Jiafeng carefully treats his elderly patients. <laughs> At times during the free clinic, I don't have time to give them acupuncture or medicine, but sometimes it's enough to just do pressure point massages or listen to them. Then the pharmacist and nurse or social workers and Cixi sisters will follow up with them later. For these team members, it matters not the length of time spent with patients, but in the warmth and quality of care provided. Meanwhile, team members in central Taiwan have turned Zhonghe Elementary in Xinxie into a free clinic. <laughs> Doctors from Taichung City Hospital also volunteer their time to routinely visit the medically deprived. There are different ways of providing medical care, such as having a listening ear and helping to solve problems. We don't only have to be there to cure their medical symptoms. Besides treating patients at the free clinic venue, medical personnel also visit those patients unable to make it to the school this time. Seeing those who are less fortunate really makes me realize how blessed I am. Although I'm just here to do blood pressure checks, I have learned a lot in return. Knowing how far the doctors had to travel to reach her home, this grandmother was moved beyond words and also worried about how much this medical visit was going to cost her. During my break from the free clinics, many patients passed away. Thankfully, I was still able to see many of them healthy and well this time. Returning to free clinic duties once more after battling his illness, Jiang Junting is glad to have his own health back, as well as catch up with old patients whom he hasn't seen in a while.
In today's look at dangers that threaten Taiwan, we'll be tackling two problems, and both of them are man-made disasters. Later, we'll look into the problem of land subsidence in Yunlin, which is due to illegal pumping of groundwater. As the land sinks, the Taiwan high-speed rail that passes through will either have to slow down or be derailed. But first, we give Taiwan's Xuesan Tunnel a health exam and see how road users should behave in case of an emergency. A proper ventilation system inside a long tunnel is a life-saving feature, especially when a fire occurs. The fans blow in this direction, so when road users go against the direction of traffic, they will be safe from smoke. The fan inside the tunnel blows in the same direction as the traffic, and thus if an accident caused a fire and blocked the flow of traffic, road users stuck behind should get out of their vehicles and escape by walking against the direction of the traffic. Just push hard on the emergency exit door. Inside evacuation tunnels connect the two main tunnels every 350 meters. There are a total of 28 evacuation tunnels for road users inside the Xuesan Tunnel, and another eight more that allows for vehicle travel. In case of emergency, this is where you will take shelter. The tunnel also comes equipped with 402 surveillance cameras. As it is difficult to track all the cameras with human eyes, a high-tech surveillance system is employed. Whenever an anomaly is detected, the fee will automatically be sent to the main viewer. When the vehicle is on fire, disabled, or has smoke coming out of it, we will suit up and move out. But how will the tunnel fare if there is a powerful earthquake? If the main tunnels stretch over a fault, then they will be severed. Then what about the Taiwan high-speed rail? How will a train moving at 300 kilometers per hour fare when its rails are bent? The worst land subsidence along the THSR railway is right here in Yunlin. On the support column, a nail has been placed here to measure the problem. And in just one year, it shows the land has sunk by 4.6 centimeters. At the intersection of the THSR railway and Route 78, the land has sunk by 62.1 centimeters in just seven years, which has caused the rails to bend beyond their safety limits. As the trains move at such a high speed, slight deviations of the rails can easily lead to disastrous consequences. The new THSR Yunlin station that will begin operation later this year is also facing the same problem. For the past seven years, the land has sunk by 51.9 centimeter. Currently, 30.8 percent of Yunlin County is facing severe land subsidence. Currently, the two THSR columns that have sunk the most have been filled and reinforced. However, the solution lies in stopping the pumping of groundwater. The government has had a hard time cracking down on the illegal use of groundwater, while the sixth naphtha cracking plant is also to blame. The plant draws so much water from the Jiji Weir that the alluvial fan downstream is not getting enough water. As the Zhuoshui River fails to replenish groundwater, land subsidence has worsened downstream right where the THSR railway is. As we try to prevent such disasters from happening, I think we must continue to be vigilant and observant while taking all the needed precautionary measures. As it is difficult for the human eye to detect land subsidence, experts worry that one day the THSR will either be forced to slow down or face a devastating derailment. The Tsuji Johor Bahru branch in Malaysia is celebrating its 20th anniversary this year. In honor of the milestone, 108 Malaysian volunteers from Johor Bahru, Kru Lai, Pontian, and Batu Pahat will be traveling to Taiwan to learn from Dharma masters at the Hualien Students' abode. Prior to their departure, the volunteers came together to practice their sign language performance, through which they hope to express their dedication, faith, and love for Master Zhen Yin. In celebration of the 20th anniversary of the Tsuji Johor Bahru branch in Malaysia, 108 Tsuji volunteers are preparing to return to their spiritual home in Taiwan for a three-day training seminar. 
We should not be devout just because we are going to see the Master. Like the Master has said, we should work to maintain this state of mind every minute of every day. Volunteers are filled with anticipation ahead of this rare chance to see Master Zhen Yun in Taiwan. The mood is expectant and hopeful, as well as a bit anxious. We will be so gratified to see our Master, even if it is from afar. This time we'll be able to stay three days in our spiritual home of Hualien and get a deeper understanding of how the masters at the Jingsi abode spend their days. Ahead of their trip, volunteers prepared a gift for the master in the form of a sign language performance. Although the movements were unfamiliar, everyone's sincerity was clear. What we're looking to demonstrate is not the movements, but our feelings towards the master. Whether the movements are perfect or not is not important. Are we able to express our feelings for the master through these words and actions? This is our aim. In this, I think we have succeeded. Now ready in their hearts and minds, the volunteers look forward to this chance of a lifetime. In Taiwan, more and more women are getting married later in life. However, as fertility and birth rates decline with age, the use of artificial reproduction methods has more than doubled over the past decade. To meet this growing medical trend, the Taipei City Hospital recently opened its Center of Reproduction Medicine to help more women on the path to motherhood. <laughs> Today, Taipei City Hospital unveils its new center of reproductive medicine. As women in Taiwan are having children later in life, fertility and reproductive problems are on the rise. The center hopes to address these problems and needs. We have done work in this area in the past, but through this center we hope to give those in need of such services even better care and better results. Thanks to the center's top-of-the-line equipment, cutting-edge technology and dedicated staff, artificial insemination, in vitro fertilization and frozen embryo transfers can be carried out in safety and with higher chances of success. We can adjust the procedures according to the individual patient. In this way, we hope to reduce complications that arise due to differences in individuals. By getting a complete history on each patient, we can then understand if there are areas we need to pay more attention to. In the future, the Center of Reproductive Medicine hopes to give couples more options when it comes to pregnancy and parenting, and thus help Taiwan tackle its dropping birth rate. Suji volunteers in New Taipei City continue to help save lives by holding stem cell registry drives to sign up more people to donate their marrow to someone in need. In Banqiao, volunteers took to the streets to inform the public of their upcoming registry event. We will leave you with these images at the end of the program. Thank you for watching the headlines. Goodbye.